Hello, hello. Today I'm going to be making a collage or collages from scraps found in a magazine and I guess my imagination. And so I thought I'd share the process with you. And it's quite a useful kind of art exercise. And I think it is a bit like an exercise. It flexes my artistic muscles. It makes me think and it can be a bit challenging and a bit stretching and a bit difficult because Sometimes taking some found papers and just trying to create something from nothing is not as easy as it might at first appear, but it's a good exercise and I find that this kind of process is really helpful to me in my art practice. It's helped me discover things, find things out, and I just wanted to share that with you today. In my last video, I showed you a collage that I had created from pieces of a magazine, and then I had used that collage to paint a painting. And here, I just thought I'd show you some other pages in my sketchbook, which I have made from cutting out pieces, interesting little shapes or patterns or moments from a magazine. So I go through a magazine and I just look for any of the colours I like, the shapes I like, the patterns I like, and I cut them out. And then here on these pages, I've really tried to create interesting compositions from the shapes that I have cut out. You know, I really like this page. There's something about this page that really appeals to me. And I can see that I could very easily take some of these kind of motifs, shapes, compositional ideas, and use them in lots of different ways. So I think there's something quite fun, quite playful about reusing, recycling an old magazine and bringing together different little morsels and pieces, different patterns, different colours, really using found papers. So using what presents itself to you and seeing if you can create a composition or use the papers together in a way to create something. <laughs> Starting from scratch, brick by brick. No path carved out for us now. The brush is thick. This is the kind of eclectic pile of oddments and bits and bobs that I have ended up with going through the magazine, just looking for things that I find visually pleasing, interesting. And I find this kind of exercise useful in that it makes me really think, what do I find visually pleasing? You know, what colours am I drawn to? What patterns do I like? And I think it helps that this magazine is Homes and Antiques and I'm interested in homewares and antiques and textiles and rugs and that sort of thing. That definitely gives a good sort of starting point, I think, if the subject of the magazine is something that you are interested in. But not always, you know, actually, you can go through any magazine and find tiny pieces. And on this first run through, I'm really super quick, so I'm not cutting out anything neatly. I sort of started cutting out this column and then I just thought, you know, I might not use it. So I just really did it um, roughly. And if I need to tidy up as I go, I will. Looking through, sort of sifting through and saying, actually, what is appealing to me? What am I finding interesting today? What colour combinations am I liking? Is there anything that I'm really drawn to? Is there anything that's catching my eye more than something else? Is there a shape or a page or a piece that I'm loving? And that tends to be how I start. The bit I love the most, start first. Grab a piece of paper, try out some combinations of things and just see if anything appeals to me. So a lot of these pieces I've just cut out the whole pattern. So I've got lots of kind of, I don't know, square pieces. So I will no doubt want to change some of these so that they have more interesting shapes. So I've just kind of cut out the whole section of the magazine, but that doesn't mean I'll use it as it's cut. We find ourselves starting from scratch, brick by brick. No path carved out for us now, the brushes. 
I've got this scrap piece of paper which has got, I think, really watered down acrylic paint. And I'm going to use that as the background and see what combinations I'm liking together and see if I can create something from all these little pieces. I don't have a plan and I'm hoping that just looking at the pieces and the colours and the pattern combinations something might become evident. quite like that vase shape. So I'm just going to play about and see what happens, see where it takes me and it may take me nowhere <laughs> and I might just you know not have discovered anything but all these little pieces will get used in something. Sometimes it's just a colour combination that I wouldn't necessarily have painted. I'm so sorry if you can hear cars and seagulls and all sorts. It's super hot in my little attic studio today. I've had to have got the window open because oh, I'm so hot. Um, I kind of quite like that. Maybe change the shape of it. So I'm just going to mess about and see. Put different combinations on a page. See if anything speaks to me. See if anything becomes evident. I really like these glass bottles. I might more neatly cut out some of these, sort of use them as vase shapes or vase shapes or vessels for flowers or blooms to come out of. Similar to those ones I showed you in my sketchbook. And the thing with these little fragments and off cuts you know you can use them for anything I'm sort of starting with a blank slate but if you were wanting to use them if your art is more representational you could take a landscape that you wanted to recreate and use all these pieces you know you can use them in lots of different ways I think just sometimes these found pieces and fragments can give us new ideas and you know it might be that there's a sort of colour combination or some something that happens I think I really like that and then I'll just remember that I like that <laughs> and that I've discovered that and that it's something new that I know and that might then appear in one of my paintings etc. I mean I genuinely think that art making is a lifetime practice just always looking for different ideas, looking for things that excite me, looking for things that have meaning to me, looking for things that resonate with me, trying to discover new things. You know, there's, and I like to do that through play and experiment and this sort of thing really. There's something very tactile and sensual and pleasing to me about cutting out paper. You know, I spend quite a lot of time on a computer um, and there's something about the physicality and the real connection with your materials that I really love about this kind of thing. It's the touching of the paper and the actually physically moving it around and seeing what happens. <laughs> Starting from scratch, brick by brick. No path carved out for us now. The brush is thick. So you would think that arranging a few coloured shapes and patterns and pieces on a piece of paper to create something interesting would be super simple and really easy and actually it's not <laughs> I'm not finding it super easy today and that's part of the fun part of the challenge a exercise that can help me to I guess understand more about composition and try to find solutions when things aren't working and I think collage is a really good way of doing that because you can move things around so it means that you can really experiment 
and I am currently thinking that I might use try a different scrap of paper here is another off cut from a piece of paper that has got acrylic paint on it and I think because I really like high contrast and a lot of these kind of colors are relatively subtle they are blending into the background on the gray and I think they might do better on a more on a darker more kind of contrasty page so I'm going to try that instead and see if that moves me any forward <laughs> So this is where I have landed. I actually ended up messing about with these two pieces of paper and two backgrounds and seeing if I could create something interesting. Now I'm not entirely delighted with either of them. That doesn't really matter to me very much. For this kind of experiment, task, exercise, I often think the process is more important than the end result. The reason that I like to do things like this and I might encourage you to do things like this, is it helps to really flex our artistic muscles and our thinking power. We have to take some scraps of paper from a magazine and then create something fairly much from our imagination, which is not always easy. It's a challenge. And you might not have the colours you want. It is an enforced boundary that can help you think about and play around with things like composition and it forces us to think about the shapes that we enjoy, the combinations, the colours. So when I'm putting together a collage like this, I'm thinking about the space in between and the variety and have I created something that feels like a cohesive whole. And your idea and my idea of what feels cohesive and balanced will be really different. And this kind of exercise helps me to learn, to better understand myself, to better understand my preferences and my sensibilities and the things that I like and the combinations I like. And because it's on pieces of paper, look, I haven't even stuck anything down. It's, I think, a good mental kind of challenge to put together something that is interesting and works as a whole. And I might glue them down, so I might glue them down with a glue stick or some matte medium, or I might not. Uh, often I think this kind of task is about the doing <laughs> and the thought processes that the doing prompts. So all those questions that I had to ask myself, what looks good together? How much space do I want? How much kind of busyness do I want? What shapes do I want together? And there's no right or wrong answer. So it's a sort of learning through doing. So there we go. That's the collages that I've constructed today. I hope you found the process interesting. It's one of those kind of approaches to art making that can feel like a puzzle and a bit hard but also really enjoyable that's how we grow and we learn by challenging ourselves by trying to create something from not very much and seeing where that takes us and it might take us somewhere really exciting it might open a new door or it might not and that is I think the fundamental truth of art making, sometimes we have to try things and they'll work and sometimes they won't. And that's how we grow, how we discover, how we find out who we are as artists. I'm delighted that I've got a new sketchbook magic class, the Mark Making Edition. This class is all about mark making and exploring mark and experimenting with mark in our sketchbook. I'm gonna share some processes that I use in my sketchbook going to take you inside my sketchbook, talk about mark making, I'm going to share some artists that I love and really have a power hour where I hopefully give you some practical techniques, some practical approaches, a little bit of wisdom and some ideas that you can use to experiment in your own sketchbook. We'll be drawing and using watercolour paint and really wanting to develop evolve, understand our own personal repertoire of marks, the sort of language that we can create with our art tools.